Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. First day on the job site, other than when I did the initial estimate. Uh, the fence posts you've seen on the driveway, the homeowner stockpiled there, those there, you know, because they're along the side of the driveway originally. And this brick planter's coming out. This little raised planter at the porch is coming out. All that sidewalk's coming out, all the way to the front porch. And ste steps will be staying in. So right now we're bringing down the equipment. That's a CTX 100 by Vermeer. It's got an Erskine uh, hammer attachment on it. The type of finish they put on this driveway, which was an afterthought, is it's called Pebble Tech. It's just a bunch of round rocks epoxied onto the surface of concrete. And because it was an afterthought, the Pebble Tech's actually higher than the city sidewalk, and it's also higher than the garage floor. Um, the Pebble Tech was popular probably in the 80s. It started to take off. Uh, it never did that well. It was a maintenance nightmare. Epoxy fails outdoors, especially the UV. So the rocks end up rolling into the street, and then you have to walk across. So it's like walking on marbles, basically. Loose rolling marbles. This concrete, I was in for a big surprise when I started breaking this thing. When I when I started hitting, I went, huh, this concrete kind of seems kind of harder than the usual. And then I found that uh, it was, had wire mesh in it. That's a 10 gauge wire on six, in, six inch squares. It's not the heavy duty wire mesh. I mean, they make all different gauges. This is probably your lightest duty, but still does a good job in holding concrete together. It doesn't necessarily hold it that well from heaving up and down, but it works well from cracks spreading apart. Because the wire is flexible. Like I can move, once I crack the concrete across, I can move it up and down real easily, but spreading it apart and getting it, the wires to snap is very difficult. Now the initial thought on, see those columns in between the garage doors? That has, that's brick that's been painted. The initial thought was to save those bricks. And I knew that was going to be an iffy situation when I initially looked at it because they were sitting on top of the driveway. And they had been repaired at the base a couple times by pouring a little three inch uh, band of concrete around the base to try to hold it from falling off of the house. And that doesn't work very well. So I thought, oh, when I start removing this driveway, that thing's going to probably fall. And it did, and you'll see that. And then, So we're going to get rid of the brick, in other words. We can't save it. It's been painted. It never looks good painted. All this concrete is going to go to a recycling plant. It's going to end up going to a plant where they grind the concrete up and the wire gets grinded up with it and they have some magnets in there that will separate the steel as it goes through the crusher. The garage door is set in about six inches from the cold joint of the garage floor in the driveway. So what they did with this epoxy stuff, this epoxy pebble tech, is they rolled it right over the cold joint up to the garage door so they actually glued it on top of the garage floor also and we ended up chipping that off of there I brought the 14,000 capacity dump trailer in today. That's my brother's trailer, Douglas Odell. And then I got the 10,000 capacity dump trailer. So we're running dual trailers if need be. And the nice thing about the trailers, even though one holds more than the other, 
it's a flat rate on the dump fee so uh, it works out pretty good with the big trailer because you get about a third more in it for the same price We got lucky coming down the sidewalk that there was no reinforcement in this one. So even without reinforcement, you can see how durable concrete is because you can just sling big chunks around. They don't really fall apart until you hit them with a the sledgehammer. We're just going to stockpile some base in one corner because we round trip the concrete and that concrete probably was ground up from another job just like this one. So the concrete that we dump goes to the same place where they turn it into this base. So it's nice when you can pick it up after your dump run and bring it right back to the site. Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. Jim from Tomahawk just came up here from uh, San Diego to drop off this uh, machine. It's a plate compactor. Now he's gonna explain to me uh, how to use it and the benefits of this tool. What about that, Jim? Absolutely. So what we have here, this is our TPC 80 uh, with the Kohler, uh, six horsepower on it. We can also build these with the Hondas. So right here we got the Kohler version. Uh, this one comes standard with our wheel kit. Really nice and easy, especially with uh, resi any residential work or work where you might have to move your plate around to get to a job. So really easy, makes it really mobile, portable like that. Um, uh, apart from the wheel kit, we also have, you know, it's kind of a standard or simple design with uh, just the engine, the plate, the uh, exciter box and everything. So not a lot of moving parts that are going to get broken. Um, pretty straightforward. Throttle controls right here. Uh, you know, our, our philosophy on this plate was let's keep it simple. Something that's going to stand uh, the test of time and uh, be a great option for, for people like it's got about 3,000 pounds a square foot of compaction force. It's a cast iron plate, 17 by 21 inches. And this is, uh, to date, I think our top selling plate. So I think you guys are gonna love it once you get it here on the job. What are these selling for? These retail for about 1,100. 1,100, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's with the Kohler. If you want the Honda option on it, which we definitely have available, it's, it's gonna be a few hundred dollars more. Uh, that's a good just, price for a plate compactor. Yeah, it, uh, it doesn't break the bank. It's got a full one year standard warranty, three year engine warranty, uh, and, and we stock all parts locally in Southern California. Well, let me give it a whirl. We have a nice area right here that we've already graded out. We've got some compacted or some crushed concrete, and that's what we're using for the base. Let's fire it up and we drag it in here. Let's see what she does. Absolutely. So start up here, should be in the on position. Hi, we're back. We just ran the plate compactor. Um, I like the way it felt. It moved really quickly over this. And you can see that it got solid. I mean, if you, this is this is what we got here. That's just a couple passes. Now we just go over here and what we're working on. Look at, take a look at the subgrade. It's surprising how hard that actually got on this sub base, subgrade. Look at, here's what we just worked on top of. You can see it, they're very loose. But just with that couple inches that we put on that, really tightened it up. Good job, David. Beautiful. Thanks a lot, Jim, for bringing that out. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll, mm. do, the, we'll do the knuckles today. We'll do the knuckle thing until we get rid of this crisis situation. I huh? know. 
And we're like two feet away right now. I could almost kiss you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that was kind of interesting there. That machine I'm using pretty much on a daily basis it seems to be holding up pretty nicely. It moves a little bit quicker than my old unit, which is nice. I can get it done quicker. So all the brick column came down. A little bit of the actual uh, brown coat came down with it the wire mesh that was in there and the brown coat and the paper that'll have to be completely rebuilt but stucco is not going to be going i mean actually bricks not going to be going back on there we're just going to go with a nice clean look because we've already removed all the brick planters there's really no brick left on this house other than the chimney so i just suggested let's just get rid of it all together and just go with a nice clean stucco look and that's what we did and we've got the end results of all that detail coming up at the end of the video so we ran that compactor two directions and you can see the difference it makes when you hit it both ways it really le doesn't leave any more lines the first pass you'll see the lines where it's actually sinking in then when you run it the second time you're just knocking the lines out because it's not really dropping down anymore now through this walkway we did a couple changes we opened it up a little bit bigger entry off the driveway and we radiused it off of the driveway and then when you turn the corner to head for the front door we also did a double radius there just to make it look more inviting as you come in off the street because that old concrete came out so thick um, we were able to get the base in here without really removing any dirt at all and we still got over a four inch thick new driveway going in so we're going to hold back the straight form work off the corners that way we can uh cut put a radius form in those corners and if they do run well we'll just cut them back i'll just measure three feet from the corner in both directions back cut it and then uh, do a wrap and then I have a nice even radius so what I did I just found the corner of where the two would normally meet and then I just went three foot back uh, from both sides or I might have went 18 inches but whatever the case may be you just go equal equal measurements back from each corner and then you got a smooth radius See, I turned the stake sideways on the end of those form, recessed it from the flush face of concrete side of 2x4. That way that quarter inch masonite slips in there seamlessly. Also on this driver, we're going to be running the fiberglass rebar. 3 8 inch fiberglass rods made by Owens Corning famous for their cook cookware I believe can't really do any bending on site with this particular type of uh, reinforcement it has to be made at the factory to accommodate 90 degree bends or whatever kind of bends you want in them you can't really heat these and bend them on site because you they lose all their strength so i just overlap the corners it seems to work out real nicely now this city sidewalk here you can see it's in dire straits and it's sinking down this ground is pretty expansive is one reason it's not very well compacted when they initially built this so what you have is a lot of settlement and what we had to do here you know in hopes that the city sidewalk will be replaced sometime in the near future is we made the driveway actually straight and flat where it should be and that way when the sidewalk comes out they can match the driveway to get the right elevation so in the meantime it'll be somewhat of a trip hazard you might say
you know that masonite right there um normally that comes with that green wrapping plastic wrapping that you can you can get them at home depot i just tore the green stuff off and just went with straight masonite no protective green fabric on there we had to shorten that step up a little bit so we don't really have the equal steps anymore right there but are real close within about three eighths but i had to do that to cover all of the, the cracking along the base of that first step and get more slope to the front there's a beautiful aerial, aerial view right there got a nice swimming pool in the backyard in case i get overheated on this site that's always nice to have Anyway, thank you for watching part one of a two-part series. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, hit the notification button. That way you'll be notified as soon as part two comes up. And then you'll get the final results. Have a good one.